Kentucky for our virtual college experience. We're really excited to have you all and hope that you learn a lot over this next 45 minute session. During this webinar, your cameras and microphones are off so the presenter cannot hear or see you. However, you are able to ask questions using the Q&A function at any point throughout the presentation. We encourage you to keep an eye out for a recording of this session and also look at future sessions at oacac.org. And at this time, I'll turn it over to Loyola University, Maryland. Thank you so much. I'm just gonna start sharing for my presentation. Okay, hi everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. My name is Kelly Lucier. I'm the Associate Director of Admission at Loyola University, Maryland in Baltimore, Maryland. And I'm excited to share a little bit of info about Loyola with you um, and also offer my assistance for the future as you're applying to Loyola um, I'll be excited to work with you. I work with all students from Ohio. So it's a pleasure to get to meet you and I'm happy to um, take questions as we go and also answer those at the end. Um, so by way of introduction to Loyola University, Maryland, um, we are located, like I said, in Baltimore. We are one of the 27 Jesuit universities here in the United States. We were the um, first Loyola to bear the name of St. Ignatius of Loyola. So St. Ignatius of Loyola, 500 years ago, founded the Society of Jesus. The Society of Jesus is one um, order of Catholic priests, and their mission for the last 500 years has been to found schools. And so you may be familiar with some of the Jesuit universities, um, John Carroll University, Xavier University are both Jesuits in Ohio. And so you may be familiar with them and here are some similarities as I share a little bit about Loyola. Um, you can think of the Jesuit colleges as kind of like cousins. We have a similar heritage. We have kind of similar traditions and lingo that we use, but we've all grown up all across the country and our campuses are different. Our student bodies are different. Um, so you'll find something new and different at each of the 27 Jesuits that you get to know. Um, I start with our, our motto, strong truths well lived, because this is really a helpful compass for how you can come to understand Loyola as a university and also what it can offer you as a student. So when we're talking about strong truths well lived, of course, you see it on t-shirts and painted on the walls of our student center, but also it really is this kind of guiding principle that you'll hear students talk about. They talk about their strong truths. They have really adopted this as an important understanding of um, how their kind of university experience shapes their life, both from 18 to 22 years old and for the rest of their life, their adult life. So when we're talking about strong truths well lived, what do we mean? We mean we're founded in these very specific values, right? We're a Jesuit university, we are a Catholic university, we are a liberal arts institution, and we're located here in the city of Baltimore, Maryland. And so those um, identities really inform the values that are going to shape how we approach education and how you will experience that education. So we talk about values like um, academic excellence, and cura personalis, care for the whole person. And when we talk about these values, we don't mean kind of things we're checking off on a list. We mean we're going to live them out. So you're going to hear people talk about the strong truths that guide them, kind of like their own compasses. Um, and these are the strong truths that guide us as a community and the individuals um, who make up the Loyola community as well. So I mentioned St. Ignatius of Loyola is our namesake, and I really want to uh, make sure every time a student asks kind of, you know, what, what is Loyola all about? What can I gain from Loyola? I want you to understand that our goal for you is very clear. It's very simple. We want our students to learn, lead, and serve in a diverse and changing world. So everything we do is really grounded in that goal and that mission. So I wanna talk a little bit about who our students are. Um, we are really fortunate to have a student body of 4,000 undergraduates who are just stellar, dynamic, interesting people. They come to us from all over the country and the world. Um, we see students you know, come from quite far away from about 40 countries, but also from another 40 states within the US. Um, typically about 25 to 30% of our students live in Maryland and come join us on campus in Baltimore. So having about 70% of our students coming from out of state means that we are a very residential campus. 
So most students will live on our Evergreen campus all four years that they attend Loyola. What this means for you as a student coming from Ohio, you know, a couple hours drive away or maybe a quick flight in, it means like there are going to be people around on Fridays and Saturdays that when people have fall break, you have a day off from classes, everybody's not headed home right away because everyone makes the Evergreen campus their home. And so students live in our 17 residence halls, which are highly ranked by the Princeton Review. So a good sign if you're looking for a really comfortable, homey experience. Um, our residence halls are in part highly ranked and well regarded by students because the only style of living that we offer for sophomores, juniors, and seniors is going to be an apartment style. So that traditional kind of dorm, you and a roommate, two beds, two dressers, two desks, maybe a microwave in there somewhere, that experience is going to be really special for our first years. And then after that point, they're going to move into apartments with their friends right on campus. So we take care of the cable and all the stuff that you don't have to worry about living in on-campus housing. And you have the independence and autonomy of living in an apartment with a full kitchen, living room, dining room that you and your you know, three or maybe five roommates will share. We are also because we are you know a super residential campus i think it's worth mentioning we're located in the city of baltimore but we have a very kind of clearly designated campus so when you think of a city campus you might think crossing city streets to get to class or you know taking public transportation to get to your classes uptown for example that is not going to be the case at loyola maryland we're really fortunate that our campus is actually pretty small. It's only about 80 acres. So you can walk it from one end to another in about 20 minutes or so, and all of it's internal. So from any given residence hall to a classroom, I always tell students, you can bet it's gonna be about five or 10 minutes walk. Not bad at all for those eight or 9 a.m. classes. I also wanna talk a little bit about Baltimore. I love this city and I'm always really excited to share it with students who are coming from outside the area. So I'm not from Baltimore originally. And what I knew about it was kind of like the little brother city of the Northeast, you know, everybody knows New York and Philadelphia, Boston and DC. And Baltimore's nestled really nicely in between Philadelphia and Washington DC. We're about two hours driving south of Philly and one hour north of Washington. And so we, Baltimore, along with Washington DC, do form one of the largest metro areas in the country, um, the fourth largest. Baltimore is a big city. We're 600,000 strong, and we have the added benefit of about 140,000 college students coming to college in Baltimore. We are one of more than a dozen institutions in Baltimore. So we're really fortunate to be able to offer students a mid-sized city that's accessible, that has all the perks and amenities of a larger city. Think pro sports teams, major concert venues, big theater productions, you know, a lot of stuff to do, street fairs, food truck rallies. And also, you can access all of it really easy. The footprint of Baltimore is pretty small. And then we also are really close to and have a commuter rail connecting us to Washington. So students often talk about, you know, when they come to Baltimore and they come to Loyola and they're a sophomore or junior, a lot of times the thing that surprised them most is they didn't realize how easy it would be to also enjoy all the benefits of Washington. So they can, you know, take a train down and go explore a museum on a day with their friends or if they have friends who end up going to college in the DC area, it's easy to stay connected with those high school friends. It's also a great opportunity for internships. So Baltimore and DC, both really great cities to experience, both with tons to offer and our students really make the most of both. Um, Baltimore in particular, I just wanna highlight how innovative and fun a city it is to live in and to work in. Most of our students do have the opportunity to complete research and or do an internship before they graduate. A lot of times that research or that internship might be something they do on campus, but it's often also something they find out in the city of Baltimore. So if you're interested in, for example, maybe majoring in forensic studies and going into crime scene investigation or anything relating to the criminal justice system, um, we see a lot of students really enjoy the access to not just 
Baltimore cities, agencies, and, and government, but also federal and state agencies are all in this area. Um, we see a lot of business majors really make the most out of having a vibrant downtown business district. Um, so they can go get an internship with Leg Mason or EY or Deloitte or one of the other big financial or accounting firms that they're interested in working for. Um, we really do see students access those opportunities and also stay here for graduate school and find jobs in Baltimore when they graduate from Loyola. So that's always exciting to see. And we are really, really proud that our students predominantly come from out of state and even our in-state students come from outside of Baltimore, but they make Baltimore their home and then they stay here after they graduate. I was a Loyalist student. I have stayed here for many years now because I love living here and I am not alone at all. Um, these are some beautiful highlights of our Inner Harbor area, which you might be familiar with. This is only about five miles from our campus, um, but it is really different from the residential neighborhood that we're located in. So I always like to share a little bit of an idea of what the kind of hustle and bustle of the city is like. And then when you do our virtual tour or you come on our campus for a tour, you'll see that it's a lot quieter. It's kind of that leafy green Gothic architecture, liberal arts feel on our campus. So one of the ways that we introduce students to the city of Baltimore, but also make sure that they're getting familiarized and acquainted with um, Loyola and the academic offerings and all the kind of resources on campus is through Messina. Messina is our first year living learning program and every single first year student participates. And what this does, it allows you to meet students with similar academic interests who also live near you in the residence halls and you form this kind of pod of 16 students who take two classes together during their first year, one in the fall, one in the spring. You live near each other. So a lot of times those classes are in or near your own residence hall that you all share. And you're going to be really set up with a network of folks on campus who are there to support you, you 16 first year students, as you navigate those first two semesters that first year at Loyola. So your professor who teaches your fall class, your professor who teaches your spring class, they see you a couple times a week. They get to talk to you in those classroom discussions. They read the papers that you write and you know hear from your group presentations. They get to know you really, really well as people and as students. One of them is actually going to be your academic advisor which is a really important but underrated thing that you're gonna to get to learn about in college. It is so helpful to have an academic advisor who's helping you navigate that decision-making process of, you know, I'm interested in psychology, but I also loved the politics class that I took in high school. What major should I pursue? Or once you know you're going to be a biology major because you're really excited to someday go to medical school, they can support you in getting hooked up with the resources to be on the pre-medical track and maybe connect you with some other faculty who you should get to know. So those faculty members who teach you and serve as your academic advisor, they really are there to kind of be that open door. They're almost like a bridge from a high school counselor into college. And I think that's a really helpful relationship to start out with from day one. So you know whose door is open to you and can really help you throughout all the questions and decisions you're going to encounter in your first year. You're also going to get to know an evergreen peer mentor. They're an upper class student. They apply in this really competitive process because they want to devote their time and energy to ensuring that 16 first year students feel just as at home at Loyola as they do. And so they are that person who you can text and say, how do I get to the airport to go home for Thanksgiving? Or I have to take an economics class semester next, or I have to take an economics class next semester. Do you know teacher A or professor B? And they can really be that peer to peer kind of resource that's really nice to have for all those questions you don't wanna ask a professor or an administrator on campus. So that's three people, two professors, one student, 
And then your fourth person is just your bonus mentor. They're going to be someone from across campus, an administrator or a faculty member, maybe someone who teaches classes, maybe someone who works in my office and in admission or works in the student life office that does the housing for our students. They're going to be an extra person who you know you can call on when you need a sounding board about how to pursue an internship after your first year, or you're just looking for a dinner recommendation when your family comes into town and you wanna know a good place to go out to dinner. They are going to be there to support you and make sure that you have access to all the resources that you need to make sure your first year is successful, but also that your first year lays the groundwork for a really successful sophomore, junior, and senior year. So those four people work together, they work with you, and they are really your support network that you have from day one of your first year to make sure that you knock it out of the park and have a great first year at Loyola. I also wanna just share how this has transformed our campus. Um, I love this photo. It's of the newest area on our campus. It's our Center for Intercultural Engagement in our student center. And what I think Messina has really done is responded to how you as students coming to college in you know, 2021, 2022 and so on, how you want to learn and how you learn best. You are collaborative thinkers. You are really creative and innovative and interested in kind of thinking outside the box. And, you know, maybe you learn really well in that kind of 20 person classroom with a teacher at the blackboard in the front. And that's great. You can have that experience. But I bet you also have passions you want to pursue outside of the classroom or you're super excited to study abroad. And so you're already thinking ahead to that. This program really responds to every type of student by making sure that you have that comfortable transition and you get to really enjoy college the way that college can be maximized in 2020. So this is not your kind of traditional first year seminar where everybody lives in one hallway and you all meet together for you know a meeting a, a week. This is really a, a program that's gonna follow you from your classes to your residence hall, to the ways you get involved in college, the way that you decide what your major is going to be. It really is a 360 experience and it's made for students and the way that you learn and acclimate best to college. So I think that's really important to mention that this is with you in mind that this has been designed. And the reason that we have it designed the way it is is because it works really well. So we have seen year after year how successful students are because of this program. I also wanna share some information about academics. So Loyola University, Maryland has three colleges. We have the College of Arts and Sciences, the Selinger School of Business, and the School of Education. Across those, we have about 35 majors, about 40 minor programs, tons of interdisciplinary options, some pre-professional advising tracks to ensure that you can access the combination of programs that's interesting to you and that you're going to pursue over your four years. So across those three schools, you're welcome to come to Loyola and day one say, hey, I'm here and I'm a math major. That's great. But if you walk in the door and you have no idea what you want to major in or you're weighing multiple options, that's also great. I really can't emphasize enough how open and interdisciplinary our curriculum is so that you don't have to apply to the School of Business never having taken a finance class. You can come to Loyola, take some business classes, see if finance is the right fit, or maybe it's going to be accounting or information systems. So we really do want to encourage that exploration. And that's why when you apply, you can let us know what major you intend to enter, but we're not admitting you to the university based on a specific program or school that you're interested in. In terms of size, our most popular majors year to year tend to be biology, psychology, communication, business administration, and accounting. Communication in particular has three different tracks within it. So if you're interested in advertising and PR, digital media or journalism, communication is gonna be your home. If you're interested in the business disciplines, you have a few options to choose from. Business administration includes areas like finance, marketing, management, international business, 
information systems, you can really dive into these different areas and see which one's the best fit for you. We also have new and growing programs that are really exciting in areas like forensic studies, which I mentioned earlier, interdisciplinary, not just for the folks who wanna work in lab technician roles, but also people interested in kind of all aspects of forensic science, um, criminal justice, criminology, et cetera. We also have an interdisciplinary program in data science, which leverages our mathematics and statistics department and our business school. So if you're into forecasting, polling, data analysis, that is your area. If you're interested in pursuing a full major in writing, we have that option available. We offer students the opportunity to dabble in economics, political science, sociology, and history through our global studies program. So you may be hearing all of these and saying, I have no idea what I wanna major in, that's great. Come try some of these out, see what a good fit is for you, talk to your Messina professor who's also your advisor and you'll find your way. We see most students pursue more than one area of academics. So you don't need to commit to just one major. You're gonna be hard pressed to find a Loyola student who is just a biology major. More often, they're going to be a biology major with a minor in environmental and sustainability studies who's on the pre-law track, not pre-med, but pre-law because they want to go into environmental justice and they're really interested in the natural world and how our, you know, our government and our society affect it. That's a really cool path you can take. And that might not be what you're thinking about right now, but all those doors will remain open to you. Speaking of pre-professional advising, we offer tracks for pre-law, folks going to law school, pre-med, folks who are going to medical school, and then pre-health. Pre-health is an umbrella program. It includes everybody who is thinking about after they graduate from Loyola, pursuing a graduate program in areas like physician's assistant or occupational therapy, physical therapy, chiropractic medicine, dentistry, veterinary medicine, lots of options available to you. And with all three of those tracks, you have an advisor who works directly with you to make sure that you are putting together all the pieces of the puzzle you're going to need to successfully apply to those programs. And we know those advising tracks, along with our curriculum, our majors, Messina, they all come together and they are going to be really helpful in making sure you apply successfully. If you're anything like our Loyalist students, you're going to apply into medical school at a rate of 70%. You're going to successfully apply to law school between 70 and 80% success. And then we're gonna see our folks on the pre-health track going to those graduate programs. They hit almost 100% success rate every single year. So we know that you will have all the preparation you need to take that next step after you leave Loyola and head off into those graduate programs. I also want to share just a little bit about our classroom experience because I think it's helpful to understand what your life would really be like as a Loyola student. And so, you know, most students take five classes a semester. They have eight semesters over four years. So that's 40 classes. And in those 40 classes, a lot of students question as well, how many of those are going to be big lectures? And the answer is zero. And then sometimes students ask, well, how many of those are taught by a teacher's assistant, a TA? And the answer is zero. And I really can't emphasize enough how helpful and important it is for you as a student to have the support of a faculty member who's at Loyola full time, who's a PhD in their field and is an expert in the area they're teaching, getting to know you in a classroom of only 20 students. And that's intro classes, that's senior seminars. So you will really get to know your faculty members in a personal way. They're available to you as mentors and they work with you to mentor you uh, for internships, excuse me, um, to make sure that you have really all, again, those stepping stones you need for a successful few years at Loyola. So that personal academic experience is really important to us. And that average class size of 20 really means 20. It doesn't mean maybe four, maybe 400. It means you're probably gonna be in your biggest class with 35 people, but more often you're gonna be in a class of 15 students. And we really wanna emphasize how important that is to us and what you can expect from us on that front. 
I also want to talk a little bit about life on campus. Of course, you're going to spend all that time in the classroom and thinking about all the different areas of academic uh, programs that you're going to pursue, but you're also going to have a lot of time to do the other things that excite you, that get you up and out of bed in the morning, that you're passionate about, that you want to share in community with others. And so campus life is going to be really important to that. We have over 200 student run clubs and organizations for you to get involved with. That is going to be everything from the grilling club to outdoor adventure experience where you can go kayaking and caving and backpacking with other outdoorsy folks. That might include the dance team or an acapella group. There are three that could include joining one of the theater troops who put on our five productions a year. We also have a division one sports program. We compete in the Patriot League, a really competitive division of student athletes. We are going to offer 18 men's and women's teams that student athletes can join us to compete as a Greyhound under. And then we also have a really vibrant club and intramural sports program. So if you are a high school softball player or baseball player or field hockey captain who wants to continue in those sports, when you go to college, we've got teams for you. If you also wanna just play some fun games of basketball in the fitness and aquatic center, that is totally cool. And that's what intramurals are there for. We see a lot of students get involved on our campus through community service as well. So about two thirds of our student body participates in community service. And that can take a couple different forms. That might be a club, but that might also be a kind of deeper, more immersive experience. So if you want to spend all of your spring break living in community with folks affected by a really specific issue, you can get the education on that issue, work ahead of time to educate yourself and to get to know your, um, your companions on that immersion trip, and then go live in community and do really impactful work for folks who appreciate you taking the time to learn about them and their lives and to become an advocate. So if you're interested in learning more about workers' rights or civil rights, or you want to know how rural poverty is affecting the people of Appalachia, that's a great program to get involved in. We also see a lot of students integrate their academics with service by participating in a service learning course where part of their academic class for the semester includes a service project with their faculty member. Um, that is also a great way to take what you're learning in the classroom and immediately put it into action and do some good for the community around you. I want to share a little bit of information about our application process, especially if you are a current high school senior or maybe you're a student looking to transfer to a new college. A couple things for you to keep in mind. Our application process is going to be all through the Common App. It is really easy to go to commonapp.org and get on the application that serves thousands of colleges, so it streamlines the process for you. We're gonna ask for some standard documents. We'll use your common application essay as your writing sample for your application. We're gonna ask you to talk to your school counselor and send us your high school transcript, your letter of recommendation from your counselor and a letter of recommendation from a teacher. We're also going to have our students choose as they're applying to Loyola, if they would like to send us standardized test scores or not. We are test optional and we've been test optional for 10 years. There are a lot of schools who've made this recent change and we applaud it. We are really glad that this is becoming more and more common, but we wanna let you know that we've been test optional and we can't encourage strongly enough for you to make the decision of what your best application looks like. You don't need to send ACT or SAT scores to be fully eligible for the same consideration for merit-based scholarship and admission to Loyola. You decide what your best application looks like and then we'll take it from there. If you do send scores, we'll use them. So we provide these middle 50 percentage ranges for our admitted student pool, meaning students apply to Loyola, we kind of remove all the folks who chose to apply test optional, and then we look at everybody who applied with their test scores and of the students who are eventually admitted, their average SAT score is an 1150 to a 1310, and their average ACT score is a 25 to a 30. So these are super scored. 
Meaning if you have the chance to take more than one SAT or ACT, you can send us multiple score reports and we will be happy to look for your best possible composite score out of 1600 for the SAT or out of 36 for the ACT. And then we're also going to um, take a look at GPAs, of course, on your transcript, taking a look at your um, rigorous curriculum, honors classes, AP, IB, dual enrollment with a local college. We're gonna take a look and typically students admitted to Loyola have some of that honors curriculum on their transcript, along with an average GPA of about a 3.6 out of a 4.0 scale. Couple deadlines to keep in mind, we are, are offering an early action non-binding deadline of November 15th. So you're welcome to apply to other colleges. We are going to get reading your application really soon and be able to get you an admission decision in January. Alternatively, you're welcome to apply regular decision, which is also non-binding. And that deadline is January 15th to hear from us by April. Merit scholarship and financial aid is always a big topic of conversation, especially in a private college. The cost of attendance, the sticker price you might see, can sometimes seem really large. And so we want to acknowledge that and empower you to take the steps that will be really helpful to making that cost of attendance achievable and affordable for your family. And so we're gonna have two sides of this coin. Our merit-based scholarships, we will automatically review every single application and we'll let you know if you've qualified for a merit-based scholarship. This is based on your GPA, on the difficulty of your curriculum, like I was just mentioning, and if you submit them, your test scores. If you don't submit test scores, we just remove that from consideration. This year, for students who will be joining us in fall 2021, our merit scholarship awards will range from $20,000 a year to $30,000 a year. That ends up being $30,000 a year is two thirds of the tuition cost. So that is a big award in the context of the total cost of attendance. We also want students to apply for need-based financial aid. And to do that, we're gonna ask your family to submit the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid and the CSS profile through the college board. And so we use these two documents to identify your eligibility for federal funding, like federal work study and loans programs, but also for institutional funding. This is my most important tip that I ever give students when they're applying to Loyola or to any other college or university that's gonna be a private institution. We are very often going to have more funding to offer from a financial aid perspective than we do from scholarship. So sometimes families expect that the scholarship award is gonna be the fullest extent of the money available, and then maybe they'll get some federal loans or something on top of that, and that's it. That is almost never the case. We really wanna have the opportunity to make sure that we offer you all of the funding that you qualify for. And the only way to know everything that you qualify for is to apply for financial aid so that we can grant Loyola funding that way. And that means it's a grant, it's credit against your tuition. It's very similar to a scholarship, but instead of based on academic criteria, it's based on need. So in the end, when students apply for financial aid at Loyola, we see over 90% of them qualify. The vast majority of students qualify for aid. And we find their average financial aid package is over $35,000. That's more than half the cost. So most students, an average of students, are going to be able to afford Loyola at half the cost of the sticker price. So I just, I really want to encourage you to apply for financial aid, not just from Loyola, but from all private institutions you apply to. And finally, I wanna talk just a little bit about this eternal question that we always talk about when it comes to college and pursuing higher education. Why is it worth it? And specifically, why is Loyola worth it? And the reason that we talk about, you know, Messina and getting involved on campus and mentorship and internship opportunities and research is because those are all the stepping stones to make sure that your four years are going to really be worth it. So we're talking about experience, accessibility, and outcomes. The experiences you have, the ways and the ease of accessing those experiences, 
and making sure that those outcomes are positive for you, like they've been for our alumni at Loyola since 1852. And so if you're a Loyola student, I'm gonna bet right now that you will see the world, you'll study abroad, like two thirds of our students do before they graduate. Every major can study abroad. We have three programs of our own that are going to be our kind of flagships in Belgium, Thailand, and England. And we'll send students abroad to another two dozen or so programs. We're also going to know that you will graduate on time. And what we mean by on time is four years. You can complete your bachelor's degree, even if you double major, even if you study abroad, even if you have an internship or do research, you can graduate in four years. And we graduate students at a rate of four years about 80% or so, this is what we do. We know we do it well, and we know that you can be on track to do that too. We say that not because we want you gone, but because an extra semester or a year can sometimes sneak up on you. And that's fine. If college takes five years, that's okay. But also we want you to know it doesn't have to, and we don't want you to incur that extra cost when you can get out there and start graduate school or start a job because we know you'll graduate with experience, you'll have an internship, you'll have a research position like 80% of our students do. And those stepping stones will qualify you to graduate and immediately enter the workforce or go to graduate school. 99% of Loyola alumni do that right when they graduate. So we know that graduating in four years, having those stepping stones in place, and then graduating into employment or graduate school or keys to success. And then over time, that Loyola degree that you've earned is going to add value to your career. We know that our alumni out earn their peer groups by huge numbers. You will literally add income to your career long trajectory by having a Loyola degree. How does that happen? Well, the combination of what our alumni earn at their mid-career point what they earn from day one through the end of their career averages out to being way ahead of the peer group of folks who they graduated from college at the same time as. So when you are the eventual class of 2026 or 2027 from Loyola, you are going to graduate in really good company of successful driven individuals. And you will find over the time that you're in the workforce, that you are continuing to climb that ladder to earn well and live a really fulfilling and professionally satisfying life. This is really important to us. So we want you to know that you are going to have the opportunity to do just about anything you can think of at Loyola and we're here to help support that. I'm happy to serve as a resource. You're welcome to reach out to me. You can find my information on our website. You can also take a virtual tour by going to loyola.edu slash tour and getting in touch with our office that way. We would love to talk more about majors you're interested in or the application process. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you again so much for your time. I appreciate it. And I look forward to welcoming you to Loyola University, Maryland. With that, I will turn it back over to our moderator. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Wanted to thank each of you again for joining us today. We hope that you learned a lot over this 45 minute session. Once you close this window, a very quick four question survey will appear on your screen. And as a reminder, you are able to view a recording of this session and sign up for future sessions at oacac.org. Thank you all again, and we hope you have a wonderful afternoon.